Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are following up on our video last Sunday about thank companies and today we're going to look specifically at the rules for Grenadier companies and how I don't feel that they really represent what they should do and suggest an alternative to make them a little bit better in my opinion. Now I made a mistake in the previous part by saying that by detaching your Grenadier company you lost two points of hand-to-hand -hand combat and one of shooting. That's not actually true, I don't know where I got that from. You lose one point of hand-to-hand -hand and that's it. So it's, it's, it's a lot less bad than I put out. But that said, you do have to detach two Grenadier companies from two different battalions in order to form a small battalion of converged grenadiers so over the two battalions you do lose two hand-to-hand -hand, i guess but I, I could pretend that's what i meant but it's not really you also don't lose any shooting i think what may have happened is we've done it in the past because we assumed that you went from a medium-sized unit to a small size unit so that's probably a mistake that we made when playing the game but anyway you lose one point of hand-to-hand -hand. now the british and the french are the two armies that keep their Grenadiers in with their battalions. The other one we talked about in the video being the Spanish. Now the Spanish have different rules for their first battalion and their second and third battalions. This is given in Albion Triumphant Volume 1. And the rules for the first battalion, which includes the Grenadier Company, give them six hand-to-hand -hand value, which is one more than the five they normally get, and it gives them elite five plus. So as I said in the video last Sunday, it makes them a sort of pseudo elite unit. They're not quite the best of the best, but they're certainly better than your average line guys. And we'll circle back to that in a second. But the French and the British, they don't really get anything extra. Now, we can compare them to two nations who don't have Grenadier companies in their battalions. That's the Russians and the Prussians. Now, the Russians did, but they always separated them out for action. So on the tabletop, on the battlefield, in the game, we can just say that they didn't. Now, those two battalions, if they're a medium-sized unit, they have hand-to-hand -hand six, shooting three, blah, blah, blah. So it's the same as the British and the French. The only downside is if the British and French remove their Grenadier companies, then they lose that point of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So they don't really gain anything for having it, because we've seen that battalions without a Grenadier company still have six attacks. The French, uh, Sorry, the Spanish are the exception, but that's because they are notoriously poor troops. Now, you can argue whether they actually were or not in history, but certainly that's how they're presented in Black Powder. I think there's a reasonably strong case for that, but that's by the by. So, the Russians and the Prussians, they get six hand-to-hand -hand dice without a Grenadier company. The British and the French, who do have a Grenadier company, get six hand-to-hand -hand dice. So, we can see that the Grenadiers here don't add anything to the battalion. All they can do is take away by removing those companies and putting them in a converged grenadier battalion. That's when you drop that hand to hand so you'll be down to five, which is happens to be the same as a Spanish second or third battalion. So while it seems that the grenadiers give you that extra dice to take you up to six, as I say, the Russian, I don't want to belabor the point, but I'm not sure I've got it across clearly. The French and the British, they have six hand to hand with grenadier company. The Russians and the Prussians don't have a Grenadier Company, they have six hand-to-hand. -hand. So we can see that the Grenadier Company doesn't add anything. My rule suggestion change is twofold, potentially threefold. So the third one and the least useful one is that a battalion gun was manned by the members of the Grenadier Company. Not the Austrians, because they didn't have a Grenadier Company in with their battalions but everyone else's, particularly the Poles. They used captured Austrian three-pounders, and it would be crewed by their Grenadier company. So I would say that in order to have a battalion gun, a battalion must have a Grenadier company. You, yeah, that's, the, the, that's not really a hill I'm willing to die on. I don't think battalion guns are particularly good. I don't think they're particularly good in the game, and I don't think they were particularly good in history, to be honest. But um, that, that's one that you could add in as a bit more themey. The second one that I would suggest is that Grenadiers, we saw in the video on Sunday, that they were considered to be an elite trooper. They had to put their names, they had their names put forward by the colonels, who were then discussed by a, a committee, and then the senior, cap, uh, I think it was a senior captain of the Grenadier company would inspect them, 
and then they'd finally be admitted in there. They had to have two years service, all that kind of good stuff. So I think they should be given an elite status. Now, a converged grenadier battalion is just made up of grenadiers, and that has elite five plus. I think that's fair enough. So I would suggest that any line battalion which contains a grenadier company gets elite six plus. Now, this is quite a big difference because disorder is a huge has a huge effect on the game. It really does take battalions out of the game for at least one turn, possibly more. So it is huge. That's why I an additional reason why I like the Elite Six Plus because it means that, for argument's sake, me as a commander, I can fire my artillery at that British Line Battalion. For argument's sake, uh, get the cheeky six maybe with the first shot and be like, well, I don't need to fire at them anymore. So I can switch my fire elsewhere. If there's that one in six chance that that battalion is going to be able to shake off its disorder, it's not very high, but it is there. It is that key thing of one in six times they are going to be able to throw it off. And if you're the French player, it's always going to seem like it's in that one crucial turn where you don't want it to happen. On the flip side, it means that armies such as the Russians and the Austrians wouldn't have elite six plus on their line battalions. And I think that's fair enough because those armies, particularly early on, so not necessarily in the period that Black Powder currently covers, but if we're going to start going back to the Danube campaign, possibly even the Austerlitz campaign, then those armies had very poor battalion level command and control. It was better than their brigade and divisional control, but it still wasn't great. So I think by not having that elite six plus, that will also push them down as well. It's, it's a way of buffing the French and the British to make the Austrians and the Russians just a, a step down from them. Not Certainly not useless, particularly if defending, but it just knocks them down a little bit and really gives the French and the British that extra half a pip of, of goodness, shall we say. If you've seen my videos on the deadliest units and the survivalist units of Black Powder, then the British did quite well, the Highlanders in particular, but um, the Austrians were up there as well. I think they're the best, the most survivalist unit. So anything that knocks them down a little bit, I think, is probably a good thing. It's what we call in the Warhammer world, it's what we call the nerf or a buff. A nerf is making something a little bit weaker. A buff is where you make something a bit stronger. So by, may, by buffing the British and the French, you're making them comparatively stronger against the Austrians and the Russians. The light companies, the way that they deal with those being converged is that you lose the mixed formation. I think that works absolutely brilliant. I think Black Powder does a great job with the light companies. My only concern is that the Grenadier companies aren't perhaps given the love that they deserve. Maybe I like Grenadiers a bit too much. I freely admit I do like a guy in a bearskin, I have to say. <laughs> but um, joking aside, I think the Grenadiers could do with a little bit of an improvement. When they're in their own battalions, they've got the Elite 5 Plus, they've got the extra hand-to-hand. -hand. Fantastic. I think they do those rules really well. But it's the Grenadiers, when they are an intrinsic part of the battalion, they seem to be almost, almost ignored until they're not there. And I think that's a bit of a shame. Especially as you've painted up that battalion, particularly if you're doing early or mid-war, French uh, especially, or you know any of the, the French aligned powers. You've got those bear skins, you know, they look awesome, you're really happy with them. And then you look at them on the tabletop, they don't actually make any difference. For me, I like to see them, I like to make them a difference. I did say there were going to be three actually changes, didn't I? That was the most important one, Elite 6 Plus. The third one, which I completely forgot about until now, is that they also get the Engineer Special Rule. Now, I haven't quite worked out what the Engineer Special Rule might be. It might be that the opponents only get plus one from being in defended obstacles or something like that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think having a Pioneer detachment in your battalions could do for you. And the Pioneers, as I said in the video on Sunday, they would go in with the grenadier company not with the battalion command as we often put them in wargaming figures because it looks just it just looks better that way but that's it thank you very much for listening there is going to be unfortunately no video this weekend i am away i'm filming for a friend's new channel i gave them a shout out in the last video so i'll do that again it's triple crown wargaming if you are interested in warhammer then that's a very good site uh, they're on youtube they've got their own website as well so check that out but uh, I'll be away doing some filming for them, 
So I won't be back until uh, next week. Hopefully I'll get a video out on Wednesday. And I'm hoping while out, because they're, they're down in Essex. So I'll be going through London. And I'm hoping while I'm there to get something a little bit special for you next weekend. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.